your DSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we're still talking commitment 2020, even though we are at the end of the calendar year. Tonight we're joined by the congressman elect for the 5th Congressional District. Now most people look at this as a Northeast Louisiana district, but believe it or not, it touches parts of Southeast Louisiana. Most importantly, Washington Parish, Tangipaho and St. Helena. The person who won this election earlier this month, Luke Letlow, he is joining us right now. First off, congratulations. Thank you, Travis. Great to be with you tonight. Now, and let's talk about this. A lot of people, and I know you saw this on the campaign trail, districts were redrawn about a decade ago. Your district that you're going to represent here for the next two years at least represents Washington, St. Helena, and Tangibaho. If you can talk about this and the fact that this district is so uniquely drawn that it touches parts of Southeast Louisiana. Well, you're exactly right. It's obviously, uh, there's a lot of room between Bastrop, Bunky, and Bogalusa. I like to say that often. Uh, and you're right, it's a, it's a tough area to get to uh, out of Monroe. But I'll tell you, you know, there's a lot in common between some of those rural parishes in the Florida parish area and Northeast Louisiana, Central Louisiana. I like to tell people I view it as a rural Louisiana district, and that's truly uh, who I intend to represent. It's the rural voters of this state. So let's talk about Washington Parish. A lot of issues there. You campaigned heavily in that area, which was odd to a lot of people because some people there didn't realize that you are now their congressman in about one month here. What's your number one goal for the people who are watching this in Franklinton and Bogalusa and the rest of Washington Parish? What do you want to deliver for them from Washington, D.C.? Look, I'll tell you uh, straight. Obviously, I've been there 12, 13 times throughout the campaign. Uh, very proud to be there know the local officials from the sheriff down to the mayors of Arnado and Angie. So number one, I'm going to go to Washington. I'm going to help try and get secure funding for the Zachary Taylor Parkway. That's a project that's been on the books for years. I think we need to continue seeing progress on that. Next, I would just uh, mention the, uh, you know, the rural, rural broadband uh, internet. We've got such challenges all across this district. In particular, though, in, in some of those rural areas of Washington, Tangent Poe Parish, we've got to make sure the whole of this district is connected to the internet. It's the super highway of the world. What about farming? You, you touched on the fact that you represent what you call a rural district. Parts of Washington right. Parish are very rural. How big of a deal is farming in Washington Parish and what can you do to help that from the federal level? Look, I'm the only candidate that ran in this race out of nine candidates that drives on a dirt road to get home every day. So I understand what life is like in Washington Parish, uh, Tangipo Parish, but I'll tell you, you know, they've got dairy, -ish, uh, dairy Farming there, obviously, dairy has been very, uh, very uh, attacked, if you will, in, in the last few years in terms of uh, the progress that uh, Louisiana dairy farmers are, are able to have. But I'm going to go fight for them. I'm going to make sure that uh, you know that we're doing well uh, in the dairy issue, but also up in Tangipo Parish. You've got strawberry farmers. You've got a lot of uh, fruit produced up there that's been there for generations. Generational farming. We've got to fight to preserve that. If we can't feed ourselves, we can't protect ourselves. It's a good transition that you bring up Tangipaho Parish because your district includes, like I said, it was oddly drawn. Hammond and Ponchatoula are not in your district, but everything really north of that population base is. It's the rural part of Tangipaho Parish. Mm -hmm. On top of farming, have you talked to local law enforcement as well as the mayors in those cities? They have a lot of municipalities there like Laranger, Amit City. Have you worked with them and do you plan to to get federal dollars? What is their number one concern? for you in Tangipaho Parish? Sure, so in Tangipaho Parish, I would just say, again, it goes back to infrastructure, whether it's roads, bridges, uh, flooding, those three issues in particular come up. Often, again, I still talk about rural broadband, which is impacted greatly in, uh, in Tangipaho Parish. But look, I've got the support of the sheriff, I've got the support of uh, you know the assessor there in Tangipaho Parish, got to know the mayor of Independence really well. Um, and I've, I've represented or helped represent this district and that part of it for you know six years already. So. Uh, there's going to be obviously a need for me to be on the ground there often. I want them to know that I'm their congressman in the north uh, part of that parish, all the way over from St. Helena to, uh, you know, to Opelousas, if you want to go that far. What do you do to make people living there not feel left out? Because let's just be honest, the bulk of your district is northeast Louisiana. This is a slither of it, very important to the southeast Louisiana area. But what do you do to make sure that people don't feel left out, that you're not out of touch with people in southeast Louisiana? Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an official office uh, in Amy, Louisiana, which is really right between uh, Bogalusa and St. Francisville. You know, we've not had that before. We tried uh, an office uh, before in the Florida parishes, but it was more to the West. I believe Amy is the right place for it. We've already started that process. Again, I want them to know 
that I'm their congressman and I want to know them on a first name basis. So got to go there often. That burden's on me and I intend to keep it. Your political background, you came up through the ranks of Bobby Jindal. You worked for the current mm -hmm. congressman, Ralph Abraham, who you're going to take his spot now after working in his office right now. Yes. How will you work with the rest of the congressional delegation? Obviously, Steve Scalise and Cedric Richmond. It won't be Cedric Richmond much longer as he's leaving to work for the Biden administration. Right. But how do you work with the rest of this congressional delegation? What is, I know it's kind of a repetitive question here, what's the number one goal in your opinion for the state, for this delegation? Right. So what's what's so great about the Louisiana delegation is uh, obviously, you know, I've known uh, the members of Congress throughout this state for, you know, most of them for 10, sometimes even 15, 20 years. Uh, I've spoken to Congressman Richmond. Obviously, he's taken a position, uh, you know, assuming that everything goes forward uh, with the current administration. I've known uh, Congressman Steve Scalise for at least 20 years. I've gotten a great working relationship. Congressman Garrett Graves actually endorsed me in this race. So excited to have that, uh, as well as these Clay Higgins and Lafayette. Uh, so I just know this district well. I've got great support across the district. The thing we've got to do is we've got to be smart about what our issues are uh, and what committees we're on so that we're working collectively together to make sure that we're doing what's right for the state. So, for example, I'm going to try and get on committee assignments that, uh, you know, don't duplicate what some of our current delegation members face. Finally, the biggest issue facing this state and absolutely what fo would fo focuses on our district uh, is jobs, rural jobs across this entire district. I'm going to go fight to make sure we bring in opportunities, but I'm also going to help home grow some of the greatest businesses. I believe that it takes a good congressman working with state and local officials to get progress. I'm committed to doing that. Is it going to be a tough balance, though? Let's talk about Tangipaho Parish. There's a big distributorship coming in there. Medline is coming in there. Some residents don't want it. Is that going to be a fight for you to try to get jobs, but then also get certain areas zoned to agree to certain jobs that you may want to bring in from the federal level? Sure. Look, I'm a big fan of that, uh, that, that entire idea. You know, the opportunity tax credits that were passed in the last uh, administration, great example of how we get investors from other states uh, to come into Louisiana to help build and uh, create manufacturing jobs, whether it's textile industry, oil and gas, uh, been to Smitty's there in the, in the district, uh, an incredibly successful company that's privately owned right there in Tangipo Parish. You know, we've got so many blessings. We've got logging, we've got timber, we've got rivers. We've got to take advantage of that. We've got to make sure we're, uh, you know, absolutely taking advantage of the uh, blessings that God gave us. All right, let's talk COVID-19. It's obviously something that's gripping this country as well as the state, as well as what's going to be your congressional district here. How can you work with the rest of this delegation, as well as what's going to be a Biden administration to try to bring funding or resources back to your district when it pertains to COVID-19. And let me give you a more specific question. I'm sure you're keeping a watchful eye of what's going on. Does a stimulus package need to come out of Congress very soon here to help people in your district? Well, I believe it does, because uh, I can tell you, I'm about talking to local officials. I'm talking to voters. Look, they're in a tough in a tough place. Uh, and look, we've gotten some great support out of Congress in this last uh, administration. We can't just keep sitting around and uh, sitting on our hands. We've got to make sure that our economy is open, that we're not letting our economy collapse, but also making sure we're, we're spending research dollars and making sure the vaccine is safe and then getting out to uh, getting that out to keep people across this district for sure. So I believe that we've got to do that. We've got to make sure that those relief packages are passed. I'm, I'm quite frankly very frustrated that uh, Speaker Pelosi is not yet been willing to work on getting that out now. Um, again, it's about people. Our people are hurting. We just need to make sure they're getting uh, their fair share of what they need until they can open up uh, our economy full, full steam. Do you think, not of a simple crystal ball, but do you think, I know that you work for Ralph Abraham, he's on the last days here of his congressional term. Do you think something will get passed over the next week here because time is running out? You know, I've heard, I've heard different rumors, different things that they may come up with a plan that passes. Uh, I've given up on trying to predict what this current Congress is going to do. Uh, it's very unpredictable. And obviously on the Republican side, we're just not getting a lot of information. Um, so I can't tell you. I don't know if they will. What I can tell you is they need it. We need it here in this district. So your district used to be heavily Democrat. Now it's heavy Republican uh -huh. right now. If you can talk about this, how do you work to make sure that people tone down, I guess, the political rhetoric? I think a lot of people, a lot of your viewers, a lot of our viewers, a lot of your constituents or soon to be constituents probably feel like things are too partisan right now. They're too Democrat versus mm -hmm. Republican. How do you work and how will you work to try to make sure that you're elected to represent everybody and that you can really try to work across the aisle? Will you try to work across the aisle for the betterment of your district? 
look, I'm going to absolutely work with anybody anywhere that will help move our district forward, that will help our people uh, as we go through, you know, whatever challenges we have. The reality is I, I did not run for Congress to go up there and, and be one of the folks that's screaming at the other side. Look, I know what I know what's there. I've seen it. Uh, it's, at times, it's a snake pit. The reason I'm going to Congress is to get things done. You know, I'm not going to go up there and be part of the bickering side by side. I'm going there to get things done. I'll sit down with any person who will, who's willing to work with me. Quite frankly, I believe that includes Democrats, a lot of Democrats. So, you know, again, it's important that we work in a bipartisan manner. That being said, look, I'm, I'm deeply rooted in conservative principles, and uh, I'm obviously a lifetime Republican, but there's so many issues where we can agree if we try. That's what I commit to. All right, Luke Ledlow, Congressman-elect for the 5th Congressional District. And full disclosure here, we first met a long time ago when I was a 23-year-old reporter in Monroe, and you were, I think, a 20-year-old college student. So we've come a long way. Congratulations. Thank you, Chad.